Oh my god, people, we got a big pike. 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 I want me to try to grab it with this. Oh my god. He's big, big old. Oh, that's a big cigarette. Oh, get his mouth up over here. Her buds. Yes, I landed her for you. Oh, Fuck yeah. oh, oh, you're running a that's a six pound pike. That is a six pound take her. That's all yours, bud. Six pounds. I about fell out of the boat. I see that, dude. I about fell out of the boat, dude. I just pooped a little. Oh my god, dude. Your rod was flexing. Oh, oh. six pound pike, Duncan. What? Six pound pike. Oh my God, that, that is nice, dude. Hold it up, hold her up nice. Oh, dang, dang. bud. That's a clean, dang, there. that's nice. Hold her down just a little lower, a little lower for the camera. Beautiful. Beautiful freaking pike ash. And what'd you get her on, bud? Uh, Rapala jerk bait. Oh, dude, it took it day. terrible. Oh, dude, right. I was bringing it up. And then all of a sudden, oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. It's terrible, man. That's beautiful. We could do a pike catch and cook if you want. It's up to you. I can play a pike in about 30 seconds. Yeah. Sounds good to me, people. We're going to do a freaking catch and cook. I can put this clip in the start of the catching. I'll make this video do the catch and cook and I'll re-put this clip into the start of the catch and cook so they see you getting it first. Oh, that's, awesome. that's beautiful. What do you think it is, like 30 something? Oh, I gotta tape measure in my truck if we're gonna keep it. Alrighty people, we're back at the homestead. Just one of those there. We got Mr. Donkey Fisher, yes, Bud Light sir. Limes. Sponsor is terrible. <laughs> we're uh, using the old Bud Light Lime box, flay this old girl up here. And we have the legend, the legend, me, Mr. Ashen Bloomquist, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to show you how to get five boneless fillets out of one single bike. So you're gonna I need two see weapons this. of choice here. You need a long blade, you need your short stick, all right? Take this serious. All right, so I'm gonna go with the first incision here with the long cigarette. What you're gonna wanna do is you just wanna cut, cut each side, ram her down right there like that. Take a picture, Duncan, share it to the old small town stories. Videotape so I can clean my last fucking pipe. Alright, so you want them to stand kind of straight up. That is a perfect pipe. And then see, you're going to come down, you're going to feel that stop right there. And that's when you know to curve your blade like this here at about 45. And you're just going to follow along. Just like that. You're going to hear a little crunch and that's just a little bonage. Nothing, nothing the grease won't fry out. Bam. Take her right back to there. Mr. Fisher being the uh, hunter here, he knows all about the back straps. Let me tell you about oh, yeah. a pike strap there, baby. That's what it's all about right I, there. I, I, a pike uh, strap. That's boneless, completely boneless. My last pike, I didn't even cut that out. Right there. You want to go right here. Cut, cut a little bit back from this because right in there is your big Y bone. So you want to start right about there. You go down. That is some meat. You turn them down. You're going to feel your blade stop. Just going to want to slide her through there. Probably get a little tough, a little slippery. Man. Putting this on my YouTube channel, too. And then there, there's, an, there's another boneless fillet there. That's a tailpiece. You're going to flip her over. Proceed to do on this side here. Should leave her on there and skin it, take the skin off. Yeah, I was going to, but no shit on that. <laughs> anyway, that's done right there. There's your, there's your three plays. Now for the big job here, ladies and gentlemen. This is where it takes a little bit of eyeballing, a little bit of precision. So you want to take your uh, Turbo McSigurd here, this little blade. You want to stand him up 
all right? You wanna clean your area here. Just give her a few good swipes. Bam, you're gonna see that right there. You see that sticking up? See that, ladies and gentlemen? You wanna take your knife, you're gonna wanna follow that right there. That's the rib cage. Follow that all the way down. This is why the little knife's nice, because you can get right next to it, no fixing around. Bam, you hammer them all the way down. Whammy, right till you get to there. Then you do a little carving, folks. A little bit of carving. That knife is freaking sharp. Well, I sharpened them, so they should be. Oh my god, that's a nice one. So, anyway, you just kind of cut. I forgot that. You gotta cut that down right there. Oh, we got a female here, ladies and Ooh. gentlemen. A thick one. So, whammy, right there. You cut her down, cut oh, her down, yes. cut her down, cut her down, right there. Wow, that's a fillet. Oh my God, we'll, is that a fillet? We'll butterfly this one for you guys. This is what I do for the Indians over there. It's east of town. I butterfly them for them. Anyway, you do the same. Repeat the process, opposite side. I guess you wouldn't really want to catch a pike. I mean, clean a pike too much smaller than this, would you? No. Uh, ideal pike cleaning is about 25 to 30 inches. This one we Good landed on was a 30 incher. I think that's ideal anyway for me. Then you just do some more carving on this back side. The thing with pike is you always think like you're leaving a lot of meat, but you're really not because all that is just straight bone, you know, straight bone. Yeah, it is. Straight bone. Then just keep carving on down. Carving. Carbon. Make sure you hit them bones, you know, so they're not in there. Carbon. A bit more carbon. A off track there, that'd be alright. See here, folks, you just take that and that, slit that. Wow. Bam. Awesome. Wow. That's great. That's what, that's what you got. That's impressive. You can throw that in the field. 10-4 on that. Should we see what's been eaten, I guess? Might yeah. Well. We uh, get it away from the meat so yeah. the stomach ass good, don't... Good call on that. Don't get into it. So, going to here... Is that the liver? Yeah, I think that's Spleen? the liver. What is that? I'm not sure. It's either a liver or a kidney. That's pretty cool. I'll lick Probably it for a liver. dollar. Doesn't have much in its belly. Yeah, nothing at all. Nothing really in there. Wow. Oh, well, there's a little crawdad? bit of skeleton. Or something. Yeah. Oh, a little skeleton. Is that a crawdad? Oh, there are bones. Of, oh, are they bones? Yeah, they're bones. Like whiskers. Oh, something good down in there. What is that? Is that scales? Yeah, they ate a whole fish or something. Wow, people. Ate a whole friggin' fish this thing did. Now it, he only yeah. got scales yeah, in his belly. Small town stories. Get on YouTube, go and subscribe, like his videos. With that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you finish bike. Elijah Bloomquist. 130 seconds there. You know, completely hey, boneless fillets there. Follow the page. Well, uh, we'll get them cleaned up here in a minute when I get ready. Beg my pardon. Uh, big knife comes back into play here when you're getting the f meat off the fillets here. So, I'm just going to, I like to do them like this when I take them off the pike because it feels like you get more meat out of them. There's... Little devil e money. So you're just gonna take her, go right down that middle, split her in two. You can see you'll have fins on this bottom side, which will be a little bit of an issue. So I just take about half that stomach off, because it don't really matter anyway. Just stomach meat. Not a big fan of it. Anyway, that's a completely bonus fillet. If you guys want to feel it, you can. Feel free. That's, dude, that's so much easier now. Most people do this. Oh, I know. Most people flay it like they do a walleye. Mm -hmm. Then you got to back cut all them bones out. Mm. Nice be, definitely be my new method. Fish, Over there in the field. Oh, really? Well, yeah, I got a edge, video it? of it on No, I chopped it pretty far. It shouldn't be too far up there. See the meat off it. No. Oh. That's when I came over here to. I thought you were cleaning fish. He said he was cleaning fish. I thought he had a wall. He did. No, oh, I had a real nice wall. He did. On a streaky head. On a stringer and. Uh, no, not even on a stringer. On fifty pound cast, I didn't fishing? have a stringer. Really? 
So I just tie it. I found I found Shalana's pull in the trunk, so I was like, hey, yeah. I'll just rip some of this line off and just tie it through so Stoff can get a video of it. She got the shoe. Oh, you didn't have shoestrings. Right when he, he started said, pulling it up, she came off. It was the, the, she I had it wrapped it. underneath the rock, the line. <coughs> After that or no? Oh, dude, oh, they were catching not dozens walleye, of bass. bass. That's beautiful. Dude, I got one oh, uh, four-pound pike. Ashton's was belts. a six. What? Mine was a four, and uh, just unreal action right four next pounder, to the Four-pounder. It, it was real nice. It it was a real nice catch right up by the boat. But then I got one that ended up getting off. Thing but, is, uh, two people with the with the tails on these pike, you make sure you leave that. That's where you get the real fishy taste right there. Is that? Then I'll show you, you just clip that end off there. If you get real fishy fish, that's why it's in the tail right there. But uh, I had a pike that I was, I started reeling my line in. Right as it comes out of the water, fuck pike jumps out of the water and grabs it. And I'm holding it up there like a three pound pike. <laughs> that's all and then it popped off all in video though. This is a good day. Fired in. I'm gonna say how to clean northern pike thanks to small town stories. Fucking right. Anyway, I got more boneless fillets up. There's more to come after I get these all filleted. You guys, I always have a tough time with these ones. I don't know why. But you never get that full extension. On we'll uh, soak her and maybe cook it later. Right, believe. Ooh, some fresh, fresh pike. Yes. And people, if you haven't heard. If you haven't heard already, look who's friggin' here. <laughs> oh, there look he is. Look who's friggin' here. Just rolled into town, heard they were catching fish. He had to come <laughs> see what it was all about. Dirty old E-Money oh. in the flesh. <laughs> in the friggin' flesh. What are you doing now, bud? So, people, I'm gonna tell you, this is another way to get the real fishiness out of your fish, is taking the zippers out. Or mud so, veins. A fat cap type deal? What is that? This. Whoa. Whoa. Get that right out. Whoa. There you go. Right Zippered it, he did. Zippered it. Yeah, that's right there. You take that out, then move your tail, which that's a bloodline there. You can leave these in, a lot of people do, but I just take them out because get a little bit more they fish. All they, all, they all come out. That situated. There you go, fishing. Yeah. We're gonna take it out. Oh, Bud Light Lime, terrible about hey. broken product. We love you. Sponsor us. Terrible. Sorry about that. There's wow, another one. Oh yeah. yeah Bud Light Lime for Key a little here. Little bit Just trim that tail, folks. What? Trim that tail. I'm They're you. unique and great. Never It'll make all Bud the Light difference Lime. in the taste of your fish. I promise you. No, no fixing around. If you want to send us a pallet of Bud Light Lime, Bud Light Lime, you can go ahead and do that. So you're just gonna go down all your fillets and take all that out. Nice I'm tips. Gonna take the boat out, Waverly. It's gonna make for a really good video here. Sure. I have to leave all the dogs. Oh here. my god. Just take them out. Yeah, I learned that out. from my grandfather, the legendary Bucktail Wayne. Oh, if you have never heard of Bucktail Wayne, people, look up Campfire Stories of Bucktail Wayne. Yeah. You don't like him. Yeah, we'll leave that one in because that's just a beautiful flay right there. Beautiful. There's your five boneless fillets from you coming live. Small town Coming stories. live from your boy A Money. Friggin' right. Give you you got tips, A money, you gotta, E money. Show you how to clean fish. You know, that's what we're yeah. here for, folks. Hey, All about the right. tips, tricks, and techniques. Hey. That is how to clean a pike with Mr. Ashton Friggin' Bloomquist. Thanks for watching, people. Like, subscribe. And uh, if you uh, catch a pike or clean it, send me some pictures. I'd like to post them up on my Small Town Stories uh, Facebook page. Anybody who's watching, you're welcome. Go uh, join the Facebook page. I'd love for uh, some of the community that watches me to share some uh, pictures of their fish on my page because I love seeing what people's catching. Love see what you're catching it on as well. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Have a good one. Peace. Alrighty, people. Next step, you want to clean off your boneless fillets that Ashton showed you how to do here. Sure. So graciously. That was a great video. Oh, good yeah. frog, good frog. Frog. How's that fish water taste, Mrs.? <laughs> oh, Long Johnson going in the bag there. 
And we're just gonna add a little bit of salt to them, right? Yes, sir. Just uh, once you get them in the bag, get a little extra water in there with them. And you're gonna wanna salt them pretty good. It's gonna draw the blood out of the meat. Uh, I don't know, what would you say is a good recommended minimum soak time? I'd say, um, depends on if you're gonna eat them right away, I'd say two hours, but if you're gonna freeze them, I'd go an hour, hour, hour and a half. We're just leaving in there. Yeah, I gotta reach tailgate off. There's a lot of pipe here, Duncan, for sakes. Seems like uh, the longer you let them sit in that salt, they get a little tougher. Yes. They'll get a little bit tough if you leave them too long, but a few hours, get that blood out, and then once you uh, are ready to cook them, give them another quick clean, and uh, you're gonna be ready to go. But uh, stay tuned. We're gonna do a little bit more fishing, but uh, I'm gonna let these soak later tonight. I'm gonna come back and cook them. I'm gonna put all this in one video. Catch, clean, and friggin' cook. Stay tuned. Alrighty, people. Get yourself a little bit of water in these bags here. All right. We got the friggin' water in the bags. Now, let me set this one here. Oh, spilling water. Spilling water. Take your salt. Oh, great. No effing salt in the salt shaker. Wonderful. My shaker I bought. All right, I'm gonna take my sea salt here. Sea salt's better anyways, folks. Give her, give her two, three cranks. That's about it, that's all we need. A little water in there, that's gonna draw all that blood out of the meat. I repeat on the second one, and get ready to eat these bad boys in a couple hours. All righty, people. Got the grease heating up here. We uh, gonna make a little beer battered uh, northern here. Dirty old Ashton here, he caught her and he cleaned her. Yes, sir. Now your boy Stoff Reagan's gonna cook it up for you. Elijah's just spectating. <laughs> and he's gonna eat some of it. So, um, gonna do a beer batter on this. And never tried it before. I've done a lot of beer batters, never done it to a uh, dirty old pike. But, I'm gonna start with a nice bud heavy here. And I'm uh, going to use this whole 16 ounce can. And you want to do a 50 50 flour mix with this. So you're gonna, if you do 16 ounces of uh, your delicious uh, Budweiser, you're going to have to do 16 ounces of flour, which equivalents to two cups, folks. Two cups of flour. No more, no less. Get your fillets out here. Um, I'm going to get the. Uh, two cups of flour put into this thing then I'll show you when I'm adding the beer in um, you're gonna want to get your fillets cleaned up too after you soaked them in water like we told you you're going to want to uh, wash them up nice and clean them off before you start battering them and the biggest tip is you got to dry them completely off so if they're not super dry batter's not gonna stick and I don't like that. I don't like that kind. I don't like that kind either. Who likes fish with no batter on it? Not Ooh, this guy. Tune back. Alrighty, folks. Crack your cold one. Crack Take one cold. one courtesy drink. No more, no less. Yep, that's butt heavy. That's butt heavy. Definitely is. Two of these. Yeah. And I actually uh, should have waited. The better idea to, uh, you want to wait until you have your fish ready to go to do this. Because the uh, more carbonation that's in there makes it a little bit of a lighter batter. If you let it sit and flatten out, it's going to be a little bit less light, a little bit less crispy. And I also should have added this in a little bit at a time. But uh, I guess I just decided not to. So, get this going here. Just and it hair. should be pretty thick. It should like ribbon off of your spoon once you got it mixed together. And if it's a little too thick, add some more beer. A little too thin, add some more flour, people. About a 50-50 mixture, though, will get you the right consistency. Come together nicely. Oh, looks great. Looks nice. 
I'm gonna have to make more, but I only made a cup here, P. I only did a, a cup of flour and a people. She's making like a nice ribbon, as you can see off of the spoon. That's what you want. You want it to fall down a little bit before it breaks off. That's your consistency. Mix it the least amount of possible. Now I'm gonna have Ash and still move and throw some spices in here. Ooh. Getting spicy. When you're cooking with stuff, nothing's exact. We don't have recipes around these parts. It's all about the eyeball, baby. We're gonna do a shake of pepper there. Cracked black pepper is preferred, but the cheap stuff will do. Uh, put the old, this is some cayenne pepper here. I'm gonna go ahead and wanna put this in your hand so you don't accidentally like pour it out. That, that's good there. Get a good amount of cayenne, I like it terrible. Now your garlic salt here. Gonna wanna be careful with this. You use a lot of the garlic salt, you're not going to want to put regular salt with it. A little shake of that. I didn't put a whole lot of it, so I still got a little bit of room to up the sodium count here in this recipe. Well, the sea salt. We're going to go three cracks. And uh, you can. What we're also probably going to salt this fish once it comes out of the uh, pan. Once it's nice and glistening with oil, let that salt get on there. Make sure this is mixed in. It would be a better idea to put the, the seasonings in with the flour before you put the beer in. You want to mix this the least amount possible. But I goofed again, so make sure you watch the whole video so you don't mess up before I tell you not to do something I already did. <laughs> <laughs> That's your friggin' matter. Now, gonna get these uh, pike fillets cleaned. And like I said, the biggest step you do not want to miss in this recipe is dry your fillets bone dry with a paper towel. Or this batter will fall right off. Public service now. Let's small okay, house. We got the uh, pike fillets in here, people. Got them cut into boneless nugget sizes. Got the oil between uh, 375 and like 380 degrees. Maybe a little higher, but it'll drop once we put this in here. And you're gonna, gonna wanna do just a couple little tester one, runs before you put your main batch in. Get your excess batter off of there. And it should sound like frying bacon. Don't overload your pan either. This temp sounds about right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a, quite a few in here. Better go on. We're gonna do these and I'll uh, tune back in. Alrighty here folks. These things are frying up nice. About two, two and a half minutes. And they're ready to go. About ready to pull these. We'll do a little friggin' taste test for you folks. Alrighty people, we're live. Um we're about to do a friggin' taste test on this. You want to give her a bite? First bite, tell me if it's any good. Yes, sir. Oh, she's falling apart too good. It sounds crispy. Oh. Not too bad? Fishy? How is she? A-O oh, friggin' K. Real good. Oh, real that's life. real good. Mm. It's a little hot right now, but... Oh. Tremendous flavor. Friggin' rights, friggin' rights, people. Yeah, that's fire that's pike, some, ladies and gentlemen. That's some good beer that's batter. Fire pike. As well. Well cooked pike. Well cooked. A lot of people don't like to uh, eat the old pike, but if you watch uh, Ashton's video that I'll be posting later on uh, how to clean a pike, or actually it'll be this video, never mind. Earlier in this video, you'll see how to clean a pike, and then if you cook it good, hey, it's a good fish. Good game fish, good eating fish, everything. That's about it for me. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Anything you guys got to say? No, Eat this fish. Terrible. It's Thank great you. fish. Fire. Yeah. Go cook it yourself and clean it after this video. You'll be able to. Friggin' rights. Friggin' rights. Might uh, do a little couple shots of us eating this, but that's about it. Got some more frying up here. Um, if you're not using like a uh, big fry daddy or something, you might want to uh, flip these around. This is fantastic. Is she really good? Oh, real good. Dude, this way, pike nuggets are the way to go. Beer batter. Oh, these are fantastic. Can't wait to try it, people. I'll tune back in when I give her a look.
my cigarette. So, crunch cam. Woo! Oh. Friggin' crunch cam. How's that? Oh, that's fantastic. Let's get another one. Let's get a real close up crunch cam. Blow off a little bit, a little hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, friggin' yeah. Real nice, people. Frying up some more. Frying up some more, people. I'm gonna keep it, uh, keep them frying until they're gone. Suck around okay. it, folks. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too big of a Johnson for you there? Yeah. Oh, big, too big of a fish Johnson? <laughs> Terrible, folks. Oh, you can see the steam terribly. Cleveland steamer. <laughs> you just Cleveland steamed that fish down your throat. Folks, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't freaking believe it. I found myself some cauliflowers, and uh, this is one of the best sweet treats you can make when you're beer battering fish and you got some veggies laying around, onions, cauliflower, whatever you friggin' got, pretty much. Throw it in the beer batter. Pickles, anything this batter will work for. I uh, got some color flour in here, dry them off real nice, and uh, I'm going to throw them in here, fry them up for you guys. She's She's frying stuff. away, people, frying away. This stuff don't take too long, basically once your batter's cold and she's done. Around about 375 three here. Sounds like frying bacon, and it's about ready to go here, people. Too back in where we I just love the fried cauliflower so much get a little of that ketchup on there bad for your health Ooh. don't eat too many it's not recommended don't eat any if you if you prefer that like <laughs> mm. i love this so much a little salt beer batter perfection but I don't know if I said this earlier. Like, subscribe. Uh, like the uh, Facebook page I started, the Small Town Stories Facebook page. A lot follow of action on follow there. Follow that, because that's going to be tons of action on there. I got these guys, Ashton, or Elijah. Yeah, Ashton. What's up? They're both uh, admins on the old Small Town Stories page, so they'll be posting pictures. I'll be posting pictures. Uh, tips for baits, new baits, friggin' everything, people. We'll random shenanigans. How to hook it, yeah. You better join in. You better friggin' join in. Stay tuned for the pike action, catching this pike that we're eating right now. That's gonna be coming out. This catch and cook video. Got so oh, got so much stuff going on. So much stuff. Oh, frig. So Stay tuned. Stay friggin' tuned.